Hello, today we'll be checking out Hurricane Ian, Hawaii, and a way of earthquake forecasting. Hurricane Ian has now been named off the coast of Cuba. It is currently a Category 1 hurricane with wind speeds of around 74 knots. Throughout today and the next day, it will impact Cuba. It is currently gearing up to be a massive storm for Florida. Currently, residents and local government are preparing. This map was released at 2 p.m. today. There are currently hurricane and tropical storm watches in effect for the coast of Florida. And there are hurricane warnings in effect for Cuba. Also, a tropical storm warning is in effect for the lower Florida Keys. It is currently forecasted this storm will make landfall on Florida around Wednesday and Thursday. Here on NASA's blog, we can see they have chosen to roll the SLS rocket back to the vehicle assembly building today on September 26. It reads that their managers met and that they decided the storm was not improving and that the vehicle would need to be moved off the launch pad. From that blog was provided this link. This is a YouTube live stream uh, of the SLS rocket live on the launch pad. It looks like they still have yet to roll it back to the vehicle assembly building. We continue to see an uptick in seismic activity around Mauna Loa. The watch levels for both Mauna Loa and Kilauea remain the same. Today a new update was released for Kilauea. The Kilauea observations includes a continuing activity of the lava lake. They also note Summit tilt meters have shown a minor deflationary dash inflationary DI event over the past 24 hours. They continue to note that volcanic fragments in the air continue to pose a hazard. Also interestingly there was this magnitude 3.1 off the coast of Hawaii on September 25th at 18.56 UTC time. In the past 30 days, according to the USGS map, we have seen no other earthquakes in that area off the coast. In the past 24 hours, we have seen a swarm of earthquakes near the Reykjanes Ridge south of Iceland off the eastern coast of Canada. In the past 30 days, we have seen no other earthquakes in this specific area. This swarm has currently seen 14 earthquakes the largest being a magnitude 5.7. I found this interesting phenomenon called Coulomb stress. Coulomb stress is basically the stress or pressure in certain areas of crust or rock because of outside forces, whether they be seismic, human induced. Here in this map we can see modeling of Coulomb stress of the 1992 magnitude 7.3 Landers earthquake highlights a specific area in red. Just three hours later, that area in red experienced a magnitude 6.5 Big Bear shock. Looking at the same graph, across the large blue structure there is another area of red. Seven years later, that area experienced a magnitude 7.1 Hector Mine earthquake. I found references to models that exist However, I did not find the models themselves. Using a technique like Coulomb stress graphing, we may have a new possibility or an increased chance in forecasting future earthquakes. This is the GOES X-ray flux as provided by NASA. We can see on this graph in the past three days, activity from the sun has decreased. The planetary KP index, also provided by NASA, shows the same data in the past few days. We have seen a decrease in solar activity. Thank you for checking out today's video. Subscribe and stay tuned for the next one.